Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today I'm playing in the Duskmorn preview event, so thanks again to Wizards for having me. And I want to showcase this blue-red room control deck, which also includes an alternate win condition. So we're playing with a new card type, rooms, which are enchantments. We can start out by playing either half of the card, unlocking that respective door, and then later we can still unlock the other door of the room by paying its mana cost. So that way we get the full benefit. And in this case we would maybe start out by playing the Promising Stairs for 3 mana, saying at the beginning of our upkeep we get to surveil one, and we win the game if there are 8 or more different names among unlocked doors of rooms we control. So this is going to be our alternate win condition, and the main win condition we're kind of working towards. And then we can maybe unlock the central elevator for 4 mana later in the game. This is a special action, unlocking an extra door similar to how you would plot a card so the opponent doesn't really get to counter it. And then when we unlock the elevator we get to search our library for a room card that doesn't have the same name as a room we control, reveal it and put it into our hand. So that way we can start assembling at least 4 different room cards so we can unlock 8 differently named doors. Although if we have more than 4 differently named rooms we can maybe mix and match without having to unlock every single door necessarily. And then we've got the full playset of a Roaring Furnace as well as one of the better room cards. We can start out by playing the Furnace side, dealing damage to an opposing creature equal to the number of cards in hand. And then we can play the Steaming Sauna later, saying we have no maximum hand size. And at the beginning of our end step we get to draw a card, so that can be a powerful card draw engine. And then I also have the full playset of the Smoky Lounge, which at the beginning of our first main phase adds double red to our mana pool that we can spend to cast additional rooms or unlock doors. So that additional mana can also come in handy, since playing and unlocking doors can be pretty expensive. And then later we can also maybe unlock the Misty Salon, which makes an XX Blue Spirit creature token with flying, where X is the number of unlocked doors among our rooms we control. The power and toughness is not going to change if we unlock more doors afterwards, so we do want to make sure we have a lot of doors unlocked already when we make our spirit token. And then I've got a few additional one-off room cards that we can maybe find with the central elevator when needed, which are maybe a little bit less powerful than the full playset rooms. So we've got one underwater tunnel, which is just a single blue to play, so it's pretty cheap to get those eight differently named doors in play. And then when we unlock it, we get to surveil two. And then the slimy aquarium, we don't end up unlocking very often, but it lets us manifest a dread and then put a possible swan counter on that creature. So that's another new mechanic introduced in this set, where we get to take a look at the top two cards of our library and then select one to turn into a face down 2-2 creature and then we can pay the creature's mana cost to turn it face up but in this deck we're a creatureless deck so it's just going to be a 2-2 with a plus one counter on it. Then we also have a one-off bottomless pool which is a bounce spell at sorcery speed bouncing an opposing creature back also just for one mana so that's another cheap room we can maybe find with our central elevator and play it in the same turn. And then the locker room we also don't end up unlocking very often saying whenever one or more creatures we control deal combat damage to a player we get to draw a card so unless we've got maybe a spirit token from the salon or a token from manifest the dread it's not really going to be all that useful and then we also have a one-off meat locker which when it enters can tap down an opposing creature and put two stun counters on it and then the drowned diner for five mana lets us draw three cards and then discard a card so both halves are also pretty reasonable so we'll usually end up with one of the four off room cards fully unlocked and then we just need one more fully unlocked room or maybe two room cards with one door unlocked each to get those eight different names in play to then win on our following upkeep. And then to round out the deck we do need a lot of creature removal to make sure we can stay alive against other creature strategies. And we also get to play with Pyroclasm which has been reprinted into standard. So that's also going to be a very impactful card dealing two damage to each creature for just two mana. And then our author sweepers include Brotherhood's End which can also deal with artifacts. And then Ill-Timed Explosion is perfect here since we can often deal six or seven damage by discarding our room cards since they count as the sum of both halves. So if we discard our Roaring Furnace slash Steaming Sauna, that's 7 mana total, which means 7 damage with our ill-timed explosion. And then we've got some more instant speed spot removal as well with Torch the Tower, which can also maybe sacrifice a room card to bargain. Not that we actively want to do so, but sometimes it's needed. And then exiling a creature is also pretty relevant in the current meta. And then at 2 mana there's Volcanic Spite, can also maybe put one of our duplicate room cards on the bottom to draw. We've got a braid which can also deal with an artifact at instant speed. And then we have two copies of Scorching Shot, mainly to deal with opposing creatures like Shieldred at 5 toughness, which can punish us for drawing cards otherwise. 
And then Artist Talent is also decent here. We can uh, play it and then draw a card and discard whenever we cast a non-creature spell, since our deck is all non-creature spells. And then leveling it up gives our spells a one mana discount. Now this does not discount unlocking rooms that are already in play, so a little bit of a numbo there. But if we get it to level 3, we can also amplify the damage from our removal spells, which can also come in handy. And then a mana base has lots of blue-red dual lands. Thundering Falls to Surveil is also quite useful. And then a Sheevan Reef, only two copies of Spire Bluff since we're a deck aiming for the late game, so this entering tap later can be a liability. And then a Fabled Passage can also fetch up our islands and nine mountains, so mainly focused on red mana here. And then a few utility lands with Blast Zone can also maybe deal with enchantments, which we otherwise cannot answer. And Demolition Field, mainly for opposing creature lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing a couple of lanes, but we do have Artist Talents to draw into them, and some early removal, so I think we can keep. So turn to play Talents, which will discount potential rooms if we level it up to level 3, once we first cast them, but then unlocking a room that's already in play does not get a discount. Alright, opponent did not play Creature, and we didn't draw a lane, so that's a little awkward here. I don't think I just play Furnace to draw, although it's actually a consideration. Yeah, let's go for it. I want to try and hit my land drop for a turn. And then Torture Tower can maybe go. Find another one. At least we have an unlocked room in play to eventually get our eight unlocked rooms to win the game opponent with an unstoppable slasher which is a good one to torch a tower so it gets exiled and doesn't come back so that could be the move here sacking the roaring furnace could also volcanic spites which draws with talent and i can get rid of a card and draw again and then later we can get rid of the slasher with an explosion i think that's more important so first discard and draw i think it's fine to discard torch the tower draw lanes and then now I could put maybe the bottomless pool on the bottom. It's one of our weaker rooms. Alright, so we hit a few land drops here at least. And then I could fetch an island with Fable Passage. Opponent's probably on the Blood Letter combo. So that's a four toughness creature that we can answer with Explosion or maybe another Furnace. For now, get an island, I think. And then 4 mana doesn't really unlock any special room for me, but we could level up the Artist's Talents, which seems fine. And then just play a land and pass. Hope our opponent plays another creature so we can Explosion to answer multiples at once. My opponent also may be stuck on lanes here, and another explosion to draw. So the risk of letting our opponent untap without having instant speed removal is then playing a blood letter and then just hitting me with a slasher to win the game. So I kind of need to deal with it, even if it's just a one for one. With the explosion, we get to see a few more cards as well, or we could just use the furnace. So yeah, I can't really afford to just use a sauna this turn. So I guess we'll try the explosion. Don't need Blast soon. And then I could discard a land maybe at this point, since we're likely to draw more. And I do want to find more rooms to eventually win the game with. So I could discard two cards, or I could still just use a Furnace to deal with a Slasher. Which is, I think, what I'm going to do. And then first go Thundering Falls. Mountain I don't need to keep. Play Furnace. So I guess now the Slasher will once again come back with additional counters on it. But uh, should be able to Explosion it once her opponent plays a second creature. And there's an Archfiend. 6-6 six, six is pretty large, but the Elevator Slash Stairs is big enough to get rid of it. 
So for now, maybe discard the Fabled Passage and draw. And then one Elevator and Stairs can go. And I don't think a Braid is all that useful. And then Elevator and Stairs shows the mana discount, but in reality it's going to be a 7 mana card. So 7 damage. And then now we can play Elevator, or we can go with a Smoky Lounge, which will give me more mana for next turn, which I also don't mind. And then I'm happy with my hand. Okay. So we finally got rid of their Unstoppable Slasher. Opponent's got another one. So yeah, we once again need to respect the possibility of a blood letter killing us out of nowhere. So what's our sequence? Could also make a blocker with a spirit token to just trade for the slasher so we don't die on the spot. No removal spell they can cast for one mana with Cavern of Souls. So that's also relatively safe. Uh, that's going to be four mana. So I can't quite do that. Plus unlock the steaming sauna, which is what I really want to do. So yeah, once again, kind of a tricky spot. I guess I might have to cast another explosion just to see what's up. Don't need two talents. And then Volcanic Spite answers the slasher, so I don't need to discard here. And then now I could unlock the sauna and still have Volcanic Spite available. of turn draw an extra card. Probably see the opponent play Bloodletter. I'll be forced to Volcanic Spite the Slasher. And then hopefully they don't have some protection spell. And do I want to get rid of anything? Maybe the Smoky Lounge do need to find another answer for the blood letter. So we've got two mana, could search up our bounce um, room, or I guess another furnace would deal enough damage thanks to the artist. So let's do that. Brotherhood's End would also clean things up. So we have options, but uh, don't mind getting the Bound spell. And then yeah, Brotherhood's End would deal additional damage if we level up the Artist's Talents. Is that to play versus just bouncing the Blood Letter? So they have to replay it. I guess that's pretty efficient as well. And then I'm happy with my hand. Bounce Blood Letter. Can wait another turn to answer the Slasher. And then I can unlock another Sauna if I'd like, or we can try and set up our actual win condition, which is maybe more important. So unlock this one. And pass a turn. Could have tapped a lot better here to leave myself with additional blue mana, I think. But I think we'll manage. All right, so how many differently named rooms do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we should be able to set up the win in two turns. A Rush of Dread to make me discard half of my cards, round it up. That happens, so Elevator and Island can go. Take my turn. Surveil. So we're getting to see a lot of cards. Scorching Shot, also a nice answer to the Blood Letter. So options are plenty. Start by Surveilling. See what's on top. Pyroclasm could also answer their 3 toughness creature if we level up the talent first. You can just cast this for 2 mana.
So how many differently named rooms do we have unlocked right now? I count seven, so yeah, unlock one more. Make a spirit token, and then next turn in our upkeep we should be able to win the game. But uh, we've got a pretty large creature in play now as well. So just need to go to our upkeep. Our opponent replays Bloodletter, which we could answer with the Scorching Shot as well. Opponent does of course answer our token, since they had a bunch of removal in hand this entire time. Could keep the Abrade as well, which could be another answer with a leveled up talent. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And what do we think of our hands? A lot of rooms. Furnace is a good one to have in our opener as a bit of removal. And then we've got uh, stairs already, so yeah. I'll give this a try, just need to hit our land drops. Opponent fetches a plains. Black-white. And a collector's vault, so it's more of a reanimator deck. Alright, so could be weak to combo, but luckily we do have the Abraid to destroy their vault. So not sure if Furnace is going to be particularly effective here. Put him now with a new Overlord to fill the graveyard. No creatures milled. And eventually they'll get access to the 5-5 in uh, four turns to be precise. Alright, so for now I don't have much going on. Could play the Furnace just to get it on the battlefield, but I think I'll hang on to it since we might want to use it as removal. Another reason to play it is to enable Bargain on Torture Tower, so we can deal 3 damage if we sack a Furnace. And our opponent's got another Overlord here, the one that makes a pair of 2-1 Flyers. Alright, so at least we'll be able to take out one of them. But yeah, these Overlords are quite scary. Our opponent might also have ways to speed up the process in which they can attack. Smoky Lounge might be the play now, just to give us more mana for our various rooms. Even though I would like to hit more land drops, in which case playing the stairs to surveil could help. And yeah, opponent's got to besiege the mirror now to sacrifice one of their overlords and maybe reanimate it right away. As we see the new Rite of the Moth. That's a 6-6, six, six, makes another pair of two ones. That starts adding up. So if I play Furnace, I can deal 5 damage to the Overlord and then Paraclasm can clean things up. That seems like the most elegant solution. So that was a lucky top deck. The Overlord also cannot get back other avatars for what it's worth. And this is an avatar, as are the other Overlords. Bone plays another Collector's Vault. And we could abrade it once again. I think I would prefer to just get the Sauna going to draw additional cards. Since our opponent could use a Vault anyway in response to the abrade. And then they can discard some expensive creature and reanimate it. Or uh, Souls of the Lost, also quite scary, has a 7-8. Can keep it tapped down with a meat locker for a while. Boon plays another vault. And Overlord enters the battlefield. Scorching Shot, a convenient answer. So play that. And then, what else? Maybe get the uh, stairs going. Seems fine. Or we could play the Elevator, which uses up all of my mana. And then maybe get the one mana Bounce Room. So we have a bit more creature interaction. 
Sadly, we're not allowed to search up another elevator, since it has to be a differently named room than ones we have in play already. Otherwise, that's a way to maybe play around enchantment removal. Explosion could also deal a lot of damage here. Discarding Furnace slash Sauna deals 7 damage if we discard it. And Locker is 8 total. Opponent still cycling through the deck. And yeah, there we see Atraxa, one of the prime reanimator targets. And the right of the Moth to put it on the battlefield. What do we see? Mostly just creatures and creature removal, so no answers to my enchantments at least. Although Valgavoth is going to be quite scary to face. Alright, so... I might want to just take a hit from Atraxa and then save the explosion to clean up next turn. And then finding another sweeper so we don't have to target Valgavoth might also be important if they decide to cast it. Could also play the Meat Locker for now to tap down Atraxa, I suppose. Just want to try and get our alternate win condition going as soon as possible. So yeah, I guess going Meat Locker plus Stairs this turn is the way to go. So we have six differently named rooms. We get to draw. Opponent gets to use Collector's Vault. Discarding Valgavoth, which they are going to try to reanimate. So I don't think I can deal nine damage with any of my rooms if I discard them to the explosion. So finding another ill-timed explosion would help, although I guess I wouldn't be able to cast two of them in one turn. And I don't really want to pay the ward of sacrificing three non-land permanents. So, put on now with the 11 powered souls of the lost, which, yeah, I guess now I kind of regret using my uh, meat locker on Atraxa. Although we can potentially just use two removal spells, like our furnace. Which, I guess the first one would deal how much? Seven, and then the second one would deal six. So that is enough to deal with the Souls of the Lost, although Valgavoth is still a two-turn clock. So, decisions, decisions. Opponent does have a better Triumph in hand, so making a Spirit to block also doesn't really save us. Maybe there's still Explosion, so we also deal with Atraxa, and then finish off the Souls of the Lost with another removal spell here. Alright, so I have to discard Sauna, and then we have to cast another Sauna since I only can use mana on rooms. And then a land can go. I guess Valgavoth does get to potentially play those cards by paying life. Yeah, probably could have sequenced a little bit better to get the bottomless pool in play as well. So how many differently named rooms do we have now? We have Sauna, Furnace, Locker, 3, Elevator 4, Stairs 5, Lounge 6. But at 9 life, I need to survive another turn here to set up the win. Opponent cast the explosion to draw 2. I guess they could also set up their reanimator synergies, but they keep everything in hand. Yeah, might end up uh, having to play the bottomless pool and then sack some of our furnaces that we have multiples off just to bounce Valgavoth. Opponent cast the Overlord. There we can at least maybe deal with the tokens, and our opponent plays a sauna to draw additional cards. Alright, another furnace. Is that good enough? I don't hate it. I can play it, take out the Overlord, and then sacrifice a bunch of Saunas to deal with Valgavoth. And I can use the Smoky Lounge mana. So yeah, let's uh, think about this. Dealing with Valgavoth I think is out of the question, since I would have to target it twice. So bouncing it I think is a solution. So Furnace first, while it deals 6 damage. Deal with Overlord. 
Then I could also play an artist talent and maybe sacrifice that instead. Play talent, play pool. And then I would have three mana left. This room is four mana. Yeah, I think we play the talents. And then end up sacking the talent to the ward. Discard a land. Find another smoky lounge. Pay the ward. So we want to sack the furnaces that aren't fully unlocked. And then the artist talent, I think. Maybe should have uh, cast a braid here on a token first to get the extra talent trigger. There's no way I can unlock eight differently named rooms. So I think I just play another smoky lounge here to give me more mana for next turn. Yeah, we were pretty close to having eight rooms. Just needed one more mana to unlock the uh, salon to make a spirit token, and then I think we would have gotten there. Ill-timed explosion could be important. Although if our opponent just replays Valgavoth, I don't have a clean answer to it. Elevator slash stairs. I guess I'll keep as something expensive to discard would deal 7 damage. Although I don't want to sacrifice 3 things to Valgavoth again, if I can help it. And then I would still need to draw an untapped land with the explosion, I think, in order to get there. So I can actually cast an Abrador or Spike to finish off Valgavoth. So maybe start with the explosion, see what's up. We did draw the land. So now I can level up Salon. And then Volcanic Spites. Deal with Valgavoth. Sacrificing token. One. Smoky Lounge that's not fully unlocked, and then I have to decide. So Valgavoth down, ditch the Abrade. Find a Torture Tower. But the uh, problem is I need to survive another turn, and our opponent's probably just going to bring Valgavoth back once again. Starts with Liliana to make me discard. <laughs> we all have things get. Uh, Traxa would be easier to deal with. But our opponent gets back Valgavoth once again, and yeah, that ward ability is just very powerful against us. So Mountain's not gonna cut it. We get some mana. So we can... Unlock our Drowned Diner, and then probably lose the game next turn. So yeah, we can deal with Liliana potentially, but not with Valgavoth, and we just needed to get to our upkeep to win the game. But this was still a pretty epic game nonetheless. Lots of back and forth. But uh, just the wards making a sack permanence was a bit too much. Did our opponent have another Valgavoth in the graveyard, I wonder? They don't. So was I able to maybe torch the tower, exile Valgavoth in the first place? We could have avoided them bringing it back once again. And then we might have been able to deal with their uh, other creatures they reanimated. But yeah, still a very close game. Draw another torch the tower. And an attack for nine will cross the finish line. Yeah, can't complain. On to the next one. I 
Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is all removal, no rooms, which could be a drawback here since we don't really have a card draw engine. But I think I still keep our mana's good. And we get to play on the new battlefield. Brings back memories of being a child. So opponent on maybe a white aggro deck or a convoke deck. A braid could be fine, but let's look for lands and rooms since we have plenty of removal in hand. So it might be red white convoke. Although no play for now. Paraclasm is going to be good too. So for now I don't mind passing the turn, maybe using a Volcanic Spites on the Survivor. No tokens end of turn. Yeah, I mean we could take another hit for two. But maybe I can preserve my life total. Could be a matchup where I don't need Scorching Shots, since their creatures might be on the smaller side. Although it could have been a decent answer to the new Wandering Emperor. Right, opponent with a Delny instead. So, could be worth taking out. Although if they're going to be triggering it, presumably they're playing smaller creatures that die to our sweepers. So, maybe that's fine. And then for now we can get the Smoky Lounge going. Opponents got a sheltered by ghosts that can take care of our room. Although Paraclasm gets around the ward. So that might be the play now. It's uh, ward 2, so I won't be able to Paraclasm and Torture Tower in case our opponent can pump up Delny somehow. So there is potentially an argument for going for a Brotherhood's End instead. Could they have like a Monstrous Rage maybe? It's not impossible, so I'm going to play it on the safer side. And get our room back, although both halves are now locked. So, yeah, getting it exiled is not ideal. We see a Song of Tottentons making some tokens. So they might be playing the new Boros toy cards that uh, trigger off small creatures attacking. That's fine, we still have a Paraclasm. So we can Paraclasm and unlock the Smoky Lounge again. And then still have our ill-timed explosion for later. But if our opponent can build up their mana and then cast a song, especially now with a War Leader's Call in play, we could be in trouble. So yeah, just gonna try and unlock some rooms can play the Promising Stairs and then still have mana to maybe Elevator or Salon. Let's just go with Stairs plus Elevator, I think. If I go Elevator first, I don't think there's a 4 mana room I want in play as soon as possible. But I think I will get the uh, Furnace slash Sauna to draw additional cards. Just double checking here, but that seems fine by me. Still have Torture Tower available just in case. And a Spear Guard's a good creature to exile given the chance. So it doesn't leave behind a token. Could have also sacrificed an enchantment to bargain if we're afraid of a pump spell, but don't really want to give up my rooms. Alright, Scorching Shots can go, get some mana, and then could immediately play the Sauna to start drawing additional cards. And I guess that leaves enough mana to still make uh, Spirits to play defense. Five five, not too bad. And then we still have Furnace to deal damage. Explosion for more token makers. And then we're just a couple rooms away from winning with the stairs. Midnight Mayhem making 
three gremlins. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. They have menace. So we fall to one here. So we're probably not going to survive another turn. Uh, promising stairs, I don't think is quite what we need. We get some mana. So we can cast the explosion for starters. Get rid of an artist's talents. And I guess a uh, land here. Blast Zone is eventually a way to deal with the War Leader's Call, but it's probably not gonna save me here since any creature kills me. So, yeah, I guess we'll play another Elevator here. So we can get a fourth uh, room card. Tunnel to Surveil and maybe Manifest Dread. This only bounces creatures. So I guess it's going to be the tunnel. And then I think I may as well unlock this so we're closer to winning the game. But yeah, War Leader's Call plus Hasty Tokens is a pretty deadly combo. So we're probably dead here. No, nope. Torture Tower, my token. And another one. Is this a slow roll or just three removal spells? It is, okay. Well, we get another turn somehow. Island wouldn't be a terrible draw since some of our blue sources are kind of painful here. I think now the plan is to just try and win the game. I just need to play the tunnel and aquarium and then next turn in our upkeep we'll win the game. So there's probably no point in leveling a blast soon. So we can surveil. And uh, I don't think there's a point in keeping any of these really, but sure. Unlock to manifest dread. So we have a blocker, but the problem is War Leader's Call triggering. And then I guess we could pass a turn now. Alright, let's see if our opponent top decks a creature to win the game. Alright, we get to untap. Could take a blast soon. Untap and Promising Stairs triggers. And we win the game. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand. Lots of rooms, some removal. So, turn two we could Furnace, take out a creature. Turn three maybe play the Smoky Lounge to give us additional mana. And then we've got our Wing Condition in hand already. Opponent Red-White, maybe a more controlling deck if they're starting with Parlor. That's fine, so I guess we don't do anything here. Even though I could play the Furnace just to get it in play, we might want to take out a creature with it. Right, and the Percussionist is next, a good one to exile with Torsha Tower so it doesn't exile an additional card. Play Spire Bluff while it's untapped. Smoky Lounge. And yeah, we're off to the races. Next turn we could play several rooms. Redemption makes a beast. Okay, so could answer the beast. So your opponent doesn't get to tutor anything up. And then what's next? We could make a spirit. We could manifest dread. Or elevator, get another room. Which is pretty mana efficient here. And then the uh, bound spell could be good if our opponent has more Huntsman's Redemptions to make creature tokens. Can just bounce those for one mana. And then I think our first order of business will be to get the sauna going. Opponent now with Girid. Okay, so 
bouncing. This one that has haste is less appealing. So maybe we're looking at Sauna, which would leave me with two mana. And then I guess just play tapped Power Bluff is fine. Could also surveil two, maybe look for an answer. Just have to take one damage. So we have all four rooms in play that we need. Can keep the explosion, which can deal six damage if we discard the bottomless pool slash locker room. Which will be enough to take out Girid. And then it's just a matter of unlocking a couple more rooms to win the game. Alright, Balloon Man is next, also dies to our explosion. We're down to 10. And now we can discard the Elevator slash Promising Stairs instead. Even though Double Stairs would be useful in case they have enchantment removal. I think bouncing a creature is still going to be slightly more useful. And then... Could get the stairs going now, or uh, we could manifest dread, which is a bit more efficient. Look for another removal spell, maybe. Um, yeah, this doesn't matter. I suppose we could use the bottomless pool to bounce the talent back to hand. And of turn, Sauna draws, finding another Furnace. Alright, our opponent did actually have a get lost, so now I regret discarding the other Elevator. So we'll need to find another one to actually win the game. But we've got four in the deck, so I'm not too worried. Can get double Sauna going. Draw three cards per turn. Could also explore here. And surveil. I think I keep this on defense in case of another haste threat. Draw a couple cards. Salon can also make a large spirit token to help close out the game. And now a fear of missing out. Pretty good when you're empty handed as you get to just draw a card for free. And now a ghostly dancer is getting back the redemption. Alright, so what's next? Maybe wipe the board again with the explosion. Could try and get an attack in first. Does a smoky a lounge mana go away? Yeah, I guess we don't want to waste it. So we'll cast the explosion. One of these can go. And a land. Don't think we need demolition field, but island can go. And then I could play another sauna. Draw three end of turn. And there's a redemption, which will be able to bounce. Opponent can make a couple tokens here, but we do have another ill-timed explosion to wipe the board instead. And then we need to deal at least three damage. So probably means uh, having to get rid of the smoky lounge. Although at this point, I may be fine with getting rid of the bottomless pool since we need the elevator to win anyways. And I could see the spirit token being more useful. So that seems okay. And then 25 cards remaining. We're not really close to decking. Could have played Artist Talent first as well. Kind of liking another Smoky Lounge. And then make our first spirit, which will be quite large. 
Also haven't even considered using the Roaring Furnace as removal, which can also take care of a creature, but for just two mana. So we've got our alternate win condition in play here, in case we don't get there with our room win condition. So we've got a lot of mana to spend on unlocking more rooms. Can make another spirit. And now maybe play the artist's talents. Can start leveling that up as well. And then still have access to some instant speed removal. But next turn we should be able to cross the finish line. So draw three. So there's still two of our elevators and the 18 cards remaining. And a charming scoundrel is not going to make the difference. And a scrap work mutt. Alright, good game. Could use Brotherhood's End to clean things up, but we can just fly over for the win. Get some more mana. And I guess we could unlock these for a nice 11 damage. So lots of rooms unlocked, sadly not the one that wins us the game. But I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keeper. Some good interaction, our elevator and stairs to start assembling more rooms. And with a surveil especially we should be able to hit our land drops. So just looking for a land here. Artist talent isn't bad either, since it'll let us discard and draw a bunch. Still somewhat tempting to bottom it, so we just uh, I'll look for land instead. But I'll try it. Because if our opponent doesn't present a creature, then it's going to be awkward having to just cast a removal spell with no value. Found a Fabled Passage. Not as good as an untapped land would have been, since then we could have unlocked level 2 on the talent. I'm speaking in room terms here, but it is a class enchantment. Look out for ramp. Suppose is a, a ramp deck. Black, green. I could take out the lookout just to discard and draw with the talents. Don't think Pyroclasm is going to be all that necessary. And I do want to look for additional land drops. Alright, so now we could play the Elevator as the most mana efficient play. And then what room to get. In the meantime, discard Brotherhood's End, I think. Alright, so we drew Smoky Lounge, so don't need to search that up anymore. Roaring Furnace is always solid, since we can play the Sauna for card draw. I think we'll start there. Even though I'm more likely to naturally draw one, since we're playing four. Opponent with a Valgavoth's Onslaught. So now I'm kind of regretting discarding my Sweeper. But we have another one in hand, and we can probably take a hit for a turn. Hoping there's no scary face-down creatures. Yeah, I guess Brotherhood's End also wouldn't have been enough, since these are a pair of 4-4s. Four Sadly, Spire Bluff means I don't get to play Sauna this turn. Could also Scorching Shots, maybe discard and draw with a Talent, hoping for an untapped land so I can still play the Lounge. Certainly have a few options. The cleanest answer would just be to cast the Explosion, so maybe we'll start there. And then, even though I do want to hit my land drops, maybe it's fine to discard the Spire Bluff to the Talent, since I do want to keep an expensive card to actually deal damage with the Explosion. Alright, so now one Furnace can maybe go, or another Elevator. Yeah, let's discard Elevator, and then between a Braid and a Scorching Shot, I think I keep Scorching Shot, cleaner answer to a Shield Root if that shows up. 
and then keep two furnaces, which we can play a sauna as a card draw engine. But we did not hit our lander for a turn, which is a bit of a setback, since we would love to get the sauna going. Put now with a preacher. Good target for the scorching shots, and they've got another one. Right, opponent is at 19, so right now these would be making tokens, which uh, means I'm not forced to necessarily answer them. Although Furnace dealing 4 damage is a pretty clean solution, and then I could Scorching Shot the other while digging with a talent to hit our land drops. So Ditch Torture Tower, and I did find a land. So now I could be convinced to let them keep a preacher for a turn and just play the smoky lounge to get that going. And then do I discard sauna slash furnace since we're close to empty handed it's not gonna deal a ton of damage anymore. Sure. Alright so opponent untaps with a preacher. They could have enchantment removal for all we know. But at least uh, Sauna triggers end of turn, so we'll maybe get to draw a card off of it regardless. Preacher makes a token. And it's going to be another Onslaught, this time for X equals 3. Alright, these are getting pretty large. So I'll definitely need another Explosion. Opponent's got a bunch of 5-5s. Five I can Scorching Shot one of them. Still take 13. So I could do that, plus level up the sauna. Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. They probably have removal left to deal with my spirit if I make one. Although that's also a consideration here, just to make a blocker. If I unlock a few rooms, it could get pretty large, although right now it would only be a 4-4, so it's not quite large enough to trade for a phase-down card. So... Yeah, I think it's going to be Scorching Shots, one of them, see what we draw, and then most likely a level up the Sauna. At least now we have an expensive card to discard to another ill-timed explosion to maybe wipe the board. But we are running out of time. And our opponent's got the Swarm Weaver. When it enters it makes a pair of insect tokens, but not a huge concern right now. So we're at 5. Fungus could also destroy our enchantments, so that's what they were maybe looking at earlier. Blows up our win condition. We've got some extra mana, so I pretty much need to top deck an ill-timed explosion here, I think. The spirit would only be a 4-4 again, unless we play another room first, but that's not gonna save me. If I cast Let's say the stairs here, I could draw into the explosion, but then we don't have the expensive card in hand. So we need to top deck another one, but uh, that's probably the way to go. If I get the elevator, I could get the bounce spell for one of their creatures, but that's not enough. Or the meat locker to keep one tab down. I guess going for elevator still makes sense. That way I'll get a redraw from a 1-mana room. So I can get a tunnel now maybe. And then get another talent trigger. And then I need to find ill-timed explosion anyway. And we actually got it. Although now I need to make sure I have expensive cards to discard to it to deal damage. Those are not going to do. So we gave ourselves the best chance. Let's see if we can get there. And wow, we can actually deal 6 damage exactly. 
So we're still in it, I can't believe it. End of turn we draw an extra card, and so yeah, we just need to unlock three more rooms to set up the win. Hoping our opponent doesn't have another Valgavoth's Onslaught. Preacher we can beat. And another Fungus, so they actually have another Disenchant effect. Yeah, that card's been very good. Opponents worried about our win condition as opposed to the Sauna, which draws us more cards. So I think I'm okay with that. And then now we can maybe start making some creature tokens. First, maybe cast Salon from hand would be a 4-4, and then I can discard Mountain. Just needed to trade for Preacher, so it doesn't matter if it's a 4-4 or a 5-5. But I guess it's a 5-5 anyway here. And uh, yeah, then we could manifest the Dread or make another Spirit Token. Yeah, I guess we'll manifest Dread. And then I can select the Furnace here, in case we end up bouncing our own creature at some point. And then I'll keep Blast Zone in hand since we might want to discard it to the Talent. In hindsight, could have also leveled up the Talent and then cast my Room and then been empty-handed. Opponent has to go for the Throat for my token, alright, that's I guess something I hadn't considered, so making a pair of Spirits would have been better. Still happy to trump here. And another Swarm Weaver. Just needs another card to discard to the explosion. Make some mana. So is there anything I want to do right now? I don't think so, so... Yeah, just cast the explosion, hope for the best. At the very least, I can discard talent to deal with the token, so we're not dead next turn. And then I wouldn't really want to draw my win condition yet, since I don't want to discard it. So Blast Zone can go. Opponent, I guess, could also make another token with Mirex, decides to sack a token to draw. So now I'm not necessarily dead if we fail to draw. Alright, we drew a Roaring Furnace and sauna, so that can go alongside a land. So the board is cleaned up again. And then, yeah, we still need our win condition. Can uh, make a spirit token once again. Versus get more mana with smoky lounge, and then I can level up the talent. I think that's actually better. Okay, so we've got two stairs left in the deck, 18 cards remaining, so we must be getting close to another one. I don't think I discarded another one earlier, but wow, opponent with another Valgavoth's Onslaught. X equals four this time. Yeah, I don't think we're surviving a third copy. All 6-6. Six, six. I do have quite a bit of mana to work with, but what are the odds that we draw another ill-timed explosion here? There's only one left in the deck. So I gotta give myself the best chance, which means probably surveilling first. And then just cast talents. Found Smoky Lounge Salon. That's not gonna be good enough. I can make two large spirit tokens, but uh, they're all lethal. So I've got a bottom. And then, yeah, just gotta cast the talents and hope for the best. Volcanic Spite is a redraw, but not the good kind, since I won't have anything to discard to it. So, I guess we wait until end of turn to cast it, once we draw an extra card off Steaming Sauna, but then I guess it's not gonna help, since I can't cast my Sweeper at instant speed. So just double checking here, but I think we're dead. Yeah, those disenchants, I guess, made the difference. Otherwise, we would have had those eight rooms unlocked by now. So we can Volcanic Spites. But uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna be empty-handed, so it doesn't really help. So unlock a room, make a 8-8 flyer. And then just pass a turn, draw with our sauna. And then I could Volcanic Spite, get a couple redraws, but I don't think I'm gonna draw enough instant speed spot removal to keep up. The Drowned Diner could have given us a few more looks. But yeah, we're down to 14 cards, our opponent has seen most of their deck as well. But it was mostly the onslaughts that made the difference. I guess our opponent drew all four copies eventually. And one of the hidden creatures is a Preacher. So, yeah, I don't know if there's much point. And that's just a land. Discard again. And we did end up finding our win condition here. But that's not going to be enough. Alright, GG's. Close one. And our opponent's got another surprise for us. Another copy of the Swarm Weaver. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. What do we think of our hand? Got a tunnel to surveil, hit our land drops, and then we've got our elevator slash stairs and a bunch of removal, so I'll try it. Swamp into a faithful, so maybe a reanimator deck will be a good target for Torch the Tower. I guess we might want to do that right away. Opponent hits us for one, I'll take it, see if they have a scarier two drop we want to answer. And then end of turn, I'll torch it anyway. There was the risk of our opponent having some instant to sacrifice their creature and draw. For now, we'll play our tunnel here. And Spire Bluff will keep. Probably don't need Brotherhood's End since we have another Sweeper in hand. And then we can pay 4 mana to unlock the Aquarium. So, for now, play the Stairs. Which is going to be our win condition, eventually. So it's just about protecting our life total. I see Bloodletter also has a few two-card combos in the set now. Can keep the Spar Bluff, cast Explosion, although I will need to draw into an expensive spell to take care of the Bloodletter, so maybe I should be pickier. Could also go Spite plus Torch the Tower, or a Braid, instead of kind of risking it on the Explosion. Um, yeah, I guess we can pass with a Braid and Spite up, and then if our opponent goes for a combo here, we can interact. So if Bloodletter just attacks, I guess we'll take it out, starting with Maybe an Abraid and a Torture Tower, keep Volcanic Spite since the rest of my hand is okay. And no need to sack anything to bargain. So Blood let her down. And there's a Rankle's Prank, each player discards two cards, so a bit of a setback here. Luckily, we still have our rooms in play, and I'll take another one. We see our opponent discarding two useless removal spells, although we could cast the Salon to make a big spirit token. I think the Smoky Lounge is still going to be more useful for starters, giving us extra mana so we can start unlocking more rooms. Alright, Torch the Tower may not be quite what I need here. Doesn't answer another blood letter if that shows up. Alright, so we've got six mana to spend on rooms. Could manifest a dread, could get another room, and maybe immediately put it in play. So we would be looking at a roaring furnace, although there's no target for it, or get a bottomless pool. Yeah, I guess if they rankle prank again, I don't want to be stuck in hand with a card that I didn't play right away. But, uh,. I guess we could grab a Roaring Furnace and then just not play it yet. And keep up Volcanic Spite. 
that way next turn we can maybe take care of another blood letter if it shows up. And a faithful or opponent would be able to sacrifice right away. Although only as a sorcery. And we exiled the blood letter, so that was actually pretty useful. So I'll take my turn. And another Roaring Furnace could be useful, but let's look for something else. A land would be fine. Get two mana. Can cast a Furnace to take care of the Faithful. And then now we can unlock another room. Can make it the Salon. And then we're just two rooms away from winning the game. Aquarium will be number seven. Mountain Hall Keep. And then we can maybe get the sauna going to draw additional cards. And then Aquarium will be number eight. Could Volcanic Spite the Freebooter, don't really see a need. And then Paraclasm can go. And then unlock room number eight, so in our next upkeep we win. And uh, yeah, pass the turn. Can our opponent win the game? Come back wrong to destroy our explosion. I could respond with Volcanic Spite. But it's not like this is a creature that our opponent's gonna get back, so sure. Kind of a fun interaction, I guess. Freebooter attacks, we'll take it. And yeah, trigger on the stack. And win the game. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our blue-red room control deck in action. And yeah, we pulled off some nice wins with our alternate win condition. The deck does take a while to set up and you do need to survive many, many turns in order to actually get the alternate win condition. So don't think it's going to be particularly competitive, especially if there's a meta with a lot of aggro decks with haste creatures and burn spells, which our deck is not great at dealing with. But in a more casual environment with more creature decks that you can control with all your removal and sweepers, you can eventually set up your alternate win condition and it's a lot of fun. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.